tonight's Fit to Eat, we are serving up spaghetti squash pasta with wild American shrimp sauce. We teach you how to make healthy choices when it comes to pasta. We dig into what is growing at an urban garden in downtown Jackson. And Matt Hoffman, executive chef at the Governor's Mansion, is our guest. Welcome back to Fit to Eat. I'm your host, Chef Rob Stenson, and tonight we are preparing roasted spaghetti squash pasta with a wild American shrimp sauce along with an apple casserole. Our guest this evening is Matt Huffman. He is the executive chef at the Governor's Mansion for the state of Mississippi. Welcome to Fit to Eat, Matt. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Man, I'm Thank so thrilled to have you here. I mean, I got all kinds of questions. You know, <laughs> yeah. we'll have so much fun on this one. But what I thought we'd do today is show how we can do a really neat, healthy version. So come look at this. Okay. Here's, here's our final product of some beautiful spaghetti squash that I took the liberty of already doing yes. and pulling out. And it's just so, it just looks like pasta. It is. You know, and it's, it's such wonderful. a fun thing to cook with. Now, at the same time, and I'm sure you guys are focused on using wild American shrimp, huh? Definitely, I'll, as much as possible. Gulf, uh, local, local sourced. Gotta uh, be, you know? Definitely. I mean, I think it's so important for people to look and find out where does seafood come from yes. and try to support your local Mississippi companies. So beautiful, wild American shrimp we're going to be cooking. But to start with right now, I'm going to move both of those aside because we got a big, fun project here. Spaghetti squash. Spaghetti squash. Now, I'll bet you everybody has seen this animal in the store one way or another, huh? <laughs> and wonder what it is. <laughs> yeah, and how, what do you do with it, all right? I love this. This is such an easy dish. So watch what we do. You have to, and this is kind of fun. You got to perforate it first, right? Otherwise, yes, we're putting this in the microwave. Okay, some people will roast it in the oven. We're going to show people at home how to do it quickly. So why do you cut the holes? Take a guess, huh? Well, so it doesn't explode on you. Yeah, <laughs> look, I know we'll get all kinds of emails that we didn't say that because <laughs> if you don't make these perforations, It'll build so much steam up inside that the squash will literally blow up in your microwave. And you don't have to make a bunch. I just make them all the way around. All right, and now the hard part. Watch, we're going into the microwave. So microwave is over on the side. Let's have a fun right in there. We're gonna basically set that and forget it and right now easy enough to do so it's in there and we're going to kind of let it do its thing people are wondering that's about almost a two pound squash it's about eight minutes in the microwave six to eight minutes okay all right now the fun part sauteing i know what all right i gotta ask what's the governor's favorite healthy food to eat his favorite healthy food would probably be uh definitely local seafood from the coast uh shrimp dish um and even wild game, lean wild wild game. How cool! Two How cool! So this would actually fit things. the bill. Definitely, definitely. He's awesome. He's all about, about awesome. the Gulf shrimp. So. All right. Well, anybody that knows me and my cooking knows I'm a nut about garlic. Yes. yes. So what we're going to do? We're going to put a minimal amount of olive oil, and actually, this is actually canola oil. Sorry. And I use about a half of a teaspoon, so it keeps it. We're going to coat the whole pan with that, and you can see I've got that pan good and hot. Now, this sauce I'm making is for four. So here's a pound of some beautiful wild American shrimp. <laughs> man, oh man, I tell you what, I can already smell the aroma. Well, what I was laughing about is garlic. Gotta have a lot of garlic. Gotta love it. <laughs> All right. And now in this, we're gonna add in some roasted yellow, green, and red bell pepper. And you know what? To me, it's a little pizzazz. Yes. So I know when you serve in the governor, you want it to look as good as it tastes, right? Yes, you do. Yeah. I bet you do. It adds lots of flavor in and looks beautiful too. So. Isn't that neat? Yes. And then mm -hmm. we're going to throw in about half of our tomatoes at first. And if you would grab me a spatula out of there, maybe that, there you go. Perfect. 
All right, now look, we're going to be doing a lot, and I know there's very, very few of you out there that will remember all of this. So go to mpbonline.org slash fit to eat, or you can go to Facebook to MPB to fit to eat. Either one's going to have our recipes, and you can get all these goodies. All right, so you can see that the shrimp have started to brown. We got a lot in the pan, and that's why I had it. I'm going to even turn it up higher at this point since now we've got everything in there. And I tell you what, you know, most people who come on here, I don't let them touch anything. You mind stirring that up for <laughs> me sure while I grab some uh, of the rest? I can, I can keep an eye on it for you. I love it, man. Wonderful. Hey, look at this. I got a helper for a change. <laughs> all right, all due respect to all the other guests, okay? But I know I got a man that can cook. All right, what we're going to do, I'm going to add in our onions now, and we'll mix those in. Man, it's already looking so good. It smells wonderful. All right, fresh herbs. I know you got to try and get anything fresh you can, huh? Definitely. This is fresh oregano, and it makes such a difference to throw it in. Some of them I'm going to break this apart with my hands a little bit. Best way, and I mean, to me, I mean, just smell that. Is that incredible? Yes, it is. Oh, I love it. And then a little fresh basil. Fresh basil, one of my favorites. I love it. You know, and again, look at how colorful it is. Now, you can see as we're cooking this, it starts to dry a little bit, even though the juice and the shrimp are there. So what we're going to do, we're going to get the shrimp a little drunk. Now, those of you out there who absolutely positively don't want to use anything like wine, you could use water at this point. And I've actually got some vegetable stock we're going to use. So let's put that wine around. And the shrimp are cooking so beautifully. I'm going to add a little black pepper, huh? We doing all right? Yes, we are. Doing good. And now a little pep. All right, and this is the way I add crushed red pepper. I like to do this one up high. We're going to go, because it spreads it out a little bit. Let's pop that little piece in there. So we got a little crushed red pepper to spice it up. And I think we're ready for the rest of the tomatoes. So let's, let's say you've got a, a fun night going on and events are coming up. What's the family's favorite food? What do they like to enjoy? Oh, well, I'd say... Uh, uh, pretty much the same? or Pretty much the same, but uh, we also do a lot of uh, grilled roasted chicken. Um, try to use leaner proteins, uh, skinless proteins as much as possible, but... Uh, That's neat though, huh? Uh, um, whole wheat pastas if possible. Um, we just try to really, really well, balance it out. And we're talking, we're going to be talking about healthy, healthy pastas okay. as well, so yes. that's really okay. neat. All right, let's see something now. Let's kind of flip this, get everything in the bottom, up on top. Man, it's looking so pretty, huh? It is wonderful. We're going to let that cook. It almost looks like the shrimp are actually cooked already. So I think we might be ready at this point. You ready? You ready? All right, I'm going to brave the elements, guys. <laughs> it's going to be hot. So I'm grabbing a towel, guys. Don't be scared how hot a spaghetti squash is. You ready? Let's grab this right out of here. Oh, my goodness. It is hot. We're going to set it right on the board. All right, perfect, fun, and look at that. So it opens up great. Let's get a little plate that we're going to pull our seeds, and if you would do me the luxury of grabbing any spoon, any one of those is perfect, excellent. All right, so we want to kind of get all the seeds, but try and leave as much of the actual squash as possible, which we did. Looking good, huh? Looking very good. All right, now I'm going to let you have some fun with this, too. Okay. <laughs> I want to show people how easy this is. So I'm going to change this, put it down below, and actually move this to where we can start pulling out with a fork the really good stuff. So let's get our forks. All right. And you and I will both. Let's go through. Go ahead. You ready? Ready. You start with that one. Okay. Just kind of pull it through and look at that. Isn't that great? I love it. Can you see inside there? Mm, so easy. Let's, let's give them a time to hold it right steady. I'd love to see if they can get a close-up. You see how the strands? That is literally the spaghetti. Our sauce over there, let's cut that heat off if you don't mind, Matt. Sure don't. Because I tell you what. There we go. And you know what I tell them? 
Tell me, the easiest way to learn to flip a skillet is to put a piece of toast in it and practice. Yes, practice. Because some of these people tell me, there is just no way I can do that. <laughs> and I'm like, there is a it way. Is. There you is always practice. a way. Yeah. So I tell you what, we're doing great at this point. Okay. We pretty much have our squash done. Mm -hmm. We've got our sauce done. I think. Yeah, it looks really good. So listen, in our dish tonight, we're using spaghetti squash in place of pasta. Next, nutritionist Rebecca Turner explains why pasta is the number one overeaten dish. And she shows us how to expand the portion size without expanding the calories. Whether you're watching your health or your weight, you don't have to say bye-bye to pasta. Pasta isn't the problem. It's how it is made and the portion size that keeps weighing you down. I mean, just take a look at this pasta serving. This is a traditional serving size in a restaurant or that you may serve your family at home. This is actually three to four times the recommended serving. And I'm going to be the bearer of bad news, but the recommended serving of pasta is only a half a cup of cooked noodles. So this can show you where we can get out of control really quickly. Now, when ordering in a restaurant, the first thing you're always going to want to do is ask for a to-go uh, to plate. You're going to cut the pasta in half before you ever take a bite. That way you know when half is, has already been eaten. Take the other half home for lunch or dinner the next day. So when you're in the grocery store, though, there's lots of different options of pasta on the shelf. The one thing you want to look for is whole wheat noodles. That whole is a very key term. So when you're looking at the ingredients list, make sure it's whole wheat noodles. You can actually still see the actual nutrition left in these noodles. They haven't been stripped of anything. Um, like the refined noodles have. The fiber is just busting in these bad boys and they're just absolutely a better alternative when cooking at home. Another good thing to do when you're cooking at home usually means you don't even have to change the recipe. Just throw in a good cup or two of extra vegetables. Broccoli, cauliflower, and mushrooms are really good um, alternatives. What these do is these help bulk up your recipe, expanding that portion size, because who doesn't want to get to have more on their plate, right? Because the half a cup kind of looks sad. But when you do this, you're adding fiber, you're adding vegetables, you're adding that bulk that's going to help fill you up and not weigh you down. And if you're getting a little experimental in the kitchen, you can always opt for maybe a spaghetti squash. This is actually going to cook up very easily and you will fork it out and it actually looks like spaghetti noodles. Or in the place of lasagna, you can take a beautiful eggplant and cut it in thin slices and lay it down and cook your lasagna, lasagna just like you normally would. Now be prepared that these do not necessarily taste just like a, a wheat noodle would, but they definitely give the same idea. Really decreases the calorie and boosts the nutrition. And remember, portion size truly is the key to eating the foods that we love. If you are a pasta patron, then just downsize your portion and complete the meal with steamed vegetables or a side salad. Do this and your meal will be fit to eat. All right, well, welcome back. All right, what you say I put you to work again? All right, sounds good. Not just that, I'm loving this. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna have you slice maybe about a half of one of the green apples. Okay. While you're doing that, I'm going to stir. We're going to switch spots here. All right. I'm going to stir this. Gosh, huh? isn't that aroma Wonderful. incredible? And that little broth that's in there takes the place of a normal, you know, uh, sauce, pasta sorry. sauce, you yeah. know, so you got a nice healthy sauce. Beautiful. Those look great. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a little mix that we're going to actually kind of season those with. Okay. So I'm going to switch back with you. Right. Make sure that pan is hot over there if you would. And you know, one topic that we got to talk about, yes. I know Phil is a health nut. I've met yes. him down on the coast. I know he's dead serious about working out and everything else. Yes. And I heard that he was thinking about doing, I guess he gets involved with some races. Yes, he did a uh, 5K marathon last year, um, April of last year, and I believe they're going to try to do it again this year. Really? But uh, he, he's, he promotes healthy living from eating to uh, working out. Um, he just is very... So it's the real deal. It's a high priority. I know. You know, sometimes list. you see things on TV, but I knew yes. he was really he, serious he's, about he's it. He's in it every day. He lives it, sir. So. Well, I think that's great. All right, it let's is. take and we're going to dust a little bit of our cinnamon. Okay. Just a touch over all of the apples, not too much, because you know it can be so strong. Yes. 
And then I'm gonna have you, if you would, take a little of the zero fat spray okay. and spray that pan so we get a nice little coating. And it's hot, huh? It is. Really All good. right, and then we're gonna throw these. And here, watch, it's gonna be presto changeo and just quickly in there. Pretty much got them all in there the way we wanted. And you know what you could do? Yeah, if you can just move them around so they're all browning on the okay. bottom. Okay. Now, while you are working so feverishly, and like I said, I'm really kind of liking this, I'm gonna move everything in the center over here because I'm gonna take a bowl. I'm gonna take a bowl so we can do this together. All right. Fat-free cream cheese. Let's pop it right up there. A little bit of applesauce I'm going to actually put in here okay. and in here because I'm going to make a little mash. A little bit of apple juice I'm going to kind of deglaze your pan and then we're going to put a little bit of that in here as well. We're saving, if you notice, I'm saving some of that cinnamon and nutmeg for the tail end of this. Yeah. I'm going to put about half of the brown sugar in there, half in there with you. All right. Man, the smell, huh? It is wonderful, like, like apple pie. Unbelievable, <laughs> and listen, don't forget, if you wanna get this recipe and all the others, go to mpbonline.org slash fit to eat, and you can get the recipes, or go to our Facebook, MPB Fit to Eat. Very easy. All right, so we're doing great on this. Man, those smell so good, huh? Very good. Nice and healthy. We've got a broiler hot, okay? Our broiler is what we're gonna brown these under. And what I'm doing with this right now is making what's gonna go underneath them. So let's take this back, all right? Move all right. over here with me so we can have okay. a little bit of fun. Bring this over. And we'll bring that over. So now we're gonna take, let's slide this forward, about half into each pan. And then we're going to take those apple slices, place on top. Let's get all the goodness in there, huh? There it is. Oh, it's <laughs> looking so good. And then I'm gonna kinda layer the top with these. And I like to use a little bit of both in each, you know, because it makes it pretty. Yeah. You get the sweet and the yep. sweet and the sour. Isn't that neat? It is. I love apple dessert. It's quite oh man, I, I tell you what, it's like one of my favorites, you yeah. know. Yeah. And now we've got the broiler hot. And there doesn't have to be any real pattern to this, guys. And you've got all that flavor in there. What I'm going to ask you, Matt, would you yes. take this over and put under the broiler? Sure will. Right. Simple, huh? Very Simple, good. lots of flavor. It is. And then if you'll leave that door open, kind of push it right in the center, right. that way we can actually see right in there, because that broiler, if you notice, is really top hot. Yes. And I mean, it's gonna brown them in a relatively short time. So now let's come back and kind of assess what we got. Our sauce is perfect, okay? And you notice, you know what else too? Being okay. familiar with sauces like you are, mm -hmm. we didn't thicken that with any flour or anything that was unhealthy. No. We kept it all light because when it gets into that squash, yes. all the flavor is gonna get absorbed by the squash. Yes. So I'm looking at this right now. We're basically done. I've got one last little topping we're gonna make, but when we come back, I'll do that. Okay. So, tonight, we're using herbs to spice up our meal. And you can really can't match the flavor of fresh picked spices and what it can do for your food. That's why Chef Nick Wallace of the King Edward Hotel cooked up a plan to make these fresh herbs easier to come by in downtown Jackson so you can get them easily. Well, creating the gardens because that's just been my livelihood all my life. Grew up on a farm. The farm is still active right now. We still have chicken coops and that kind of thing. So I'm used to that quality uh, ingredients. Sustainable foods is, is pretty much uh, the Wallace family in Edwards, Mississippi. So coming here to the to Hilton, uh, my range was open. You know, um, GM that, that loves sustainable food, fresh ingredients. 
he was like, Nick, go for it. So we started here, and we actually picked from it daily. Uh, all our herbs, tomatoes, peppers, um, spinach, and, and all. We have turned this garden over about eight times now since I've been here. Things that people can come and pick, we have from rosemary to tricolor sage to regular sage. We have chocolate mint, pineapple mint, we actually have butter mint, we have lavender mint. I have collards from actually Georgia, spinach, you can come and get bib lettuce. We have edible flowers that you can come and get. We have Fresno peppers, cayenne peppers. The soil is what I like to focus on. We don't work off the fertilizer. We don't work off the, you know, all those things that can kind of speed up the process. Our soil is like gold, and that's what we call it. It's like enriched with nothing but the things that we actually blend in there for our great compost that we do. I think it's spread into other restaurants, because any, any restaurant downtown can come here and openly pick whatever they want. They actually get in contact with any employee of the hotel. The employee escort them back. We provide them a Ziploc bag, scissors, and they pick what they want. So it, it saves money too, instead of you going out and buying a, a quarter of a pound of rosemary and spending 12 bucks, you can come here and get a couple of clips off of it and just take it up to your apartment. But two, some of the things that I started are actually in somebody's home, so that's the most important thing to me. I also have a community garden at the Boys and Girls Club on Capitol Street. Um, started with the, the kids, it's called Club Organics, is, is the kind of group that we started with the kids. So I want to go bigger. I want to do a community garden all throughout downtown in the next year. All right, welcome back. I tell you what. I couldn't have got all this done without your help because we did a lot today. I want to make the last little sweet cream, and this is a neat trick. Greek non-fat yogurt, which is so healthy and so good for you. All right. A little sucralose, so it sweetens the sauce. A little tiny pinch of nutmeg, not too much because it's strong, and a little tiny pinch of cinnamon, and I'm still saving a little cinnamon. You'll see why. All right, we're going to mix that real quick. And this is going to be the garnish for those apples. And speaking of the apples, could you grab those out of the oven? And, you know, i got to ask you, yes. when you bring those back, uh -huh. talk to me about how did you arrive at the governor's mansion and what was your background? Did well, you um, I'm from Raymond, Mississippi. I'm a local guy. I went to school here at Hines and uh, also Johnson & Wells. And after our graduation, uh, I came back, and a good friend of mine, Louis Bruno, uh, was actually leaving the mansion. And he asked if I could come in and interview. and. And uh, the barbers, and done. the barbers hired me from there, and I've been there ever since. Unbelievable! Yes. Wow, that's really cool. That's really cool. Well, let's see. All right, we're gonna plate this. You ready? I'm ready. Our beautiful spaghetti squash. We're gonna set over on one side, and I tell you what, a half a spaghetti squash is a perfect portion, and that's what that is exactly. Like I said, we made enough sauce for four, so I put that almost like a bird's nest, and then drizzle. Look at this. Mmm. Yeah. That's the good stuff. And since this is in a casserole, it really won't intermingle. Now, we know that's hot, all right? Yes. Guys, don't touch the casserole dishes with your hands. <laughs> all right, let's grab that casserole, put it right onto the plate. Tell me that doesn't look pretty, huh? It's wonderful. Great dish. Yes. All right, and now I'm going to spread this out just a little to give us a little bit more room and make the plate look so pretty, pretty, pretty. That onion out of there, you don't belong there. All right, and now, all right, we take one spoon, okay, okay. one spoon, one and just judiciously put it right in the center, and then a little sprig of some fresh mint. And to me, that is just a beautiful, healthy, Balanced meal, some great carbs in it. You know, let's turn that around. Isn't that perfect? I mean, that's just such a pretty dish. And I think that's kind of the key, too. I mean, you got to admit, you eat as much with your eyes you do. as you do with your taste buds. Yeah. So we're really trying so hard. So let's go to the nutritional value of this meal. We have 358 calories, carbohydrates 31, protein 36. Saturated fat like none, huh? Two. So 
I would like to thank our guest, Executive Chef Matt Huffman, for joining us tonight on the show. And if you're interested in any of the recipes you saw on tonight's show, visit our website at mpbonline.org slash fit to eat or join our Facebook page, MPB Fit to Eat. So until next time, I'm Chef Rob Stenson and eat well.